I am going to start off the transaction processing and concurrency control module, which happens to be the last module of this course. So, uh, in this module, basically, I will be exposing you to some of the fundamental uh, important ideas in, in the uh, in the transaction uh, processing the subfield of uh, database systems. Uh, this is a, again a very uh, you know vast subfield of the database system. So, we will only be touching some important uh, uh, and uh, <coughs> main uh, fundamental kind of ideas and there is really a lot more for you to study uh, in this uh, field than what I can actually be able to do in a introductory uh, course like this. Okay. So, transaction processing is a very very uh, important component of uh, database uh, database systems. So, you can now see that many of our day to day uh, you know functions are actually controlled by some transaction servers sitting somewhere. Uh, you swipe your credit card and then response has to come within a few uh, seconds only then you know your transaction your purchase is through otherwise you will be um, standing there. <coughs> So many uh, of our uh, activities are now controlled by transaction processing systems. They are very, very important. So, what exactly is a transaction? Is what we are trying to understand, and then we'll see what are the issues in realizing these uh, transaction processing. Okay. So, at at this, I will be giving uh, you know more and more detailed uh, definitions for these various things that are involved. So, at this stage we can say the transaction is a logical unit of work to be carried out, some piece of work just to be carried out on the request by the end user of the entire system. <coughs> so, examples of course are many, you can say transfer of some specified amount of money from one account to another, making reservation for a, a journey issuing a book in the library for a particular user, all of these things are logical pieces of work that have that are asked for by the end users like the people at the counters and, and or people operating these web interfaces and all that. So, a few assumptions that we make in this discussion is that the database server is a single processor system, is it? Single processor system because we will be talking about the 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 process waiting and then you know uh, transaction uh, mul multiple multiple transactions uh, getting interleaved and all that. So if you have uh, so we should make it clear as to how many processors we have. So we make an assumption that we have a single processor system. If you understand these issues, then we'll be able to understand other issues later on. And we will also assume that there is a two tier architecture, a, a database system and a, a client system, a, a database server and a client system. So from there we will get requests for the uh, processing of transactions. Okay. Now, the, uh, the transactions that we are going to consider in this particular module will basically involve a single database, single database, but not multiple databases. Another thing is a transaction does not contain another transaction inside it, we will make this assumption. There is no nesting of transactions and transactions by themselves do not exchange any messages, between them they do not exchange any messages, they are all independent. Notice that in real life one of our transactions might actually touch multiple databases, if you actually do a e-commerce transaction nowadays, it might involve multiple databases, the merchant uh, database where you are picking up the product and then the payment uh, gateway and, and your uh, the actual uh, you know, a card uh, card uh, system or a bank, they are all independent systems right, they are all independent systems, they maintain their own databases and so a, a real life transaction actually touches many databases. So, there are additional issues to be considered in kind in that kind of situations. Right now, we will restrict our scope to try and understand how transaction processing happens on a single processor 
which is fetching uh, and the transaction is fetching just one database ok. So, for the transaction processing system there are a number of concurrent requests for these services. So, what are these services? These are application programs that have been developed by application programmers and are made available so that they can be invoked as part of this transaction ok. So, when you develop a, for example, a library system you would have also developed as to what is the program that can that can issue a book or an item for an end user. So, it takes in the credentials of that uh, end user you know kind of verifies that that particular person is indeed uh, eligible to take a book and then uh, modifies the uh, uh, database to reflect the fact that this book has been uh, issued to that particular person and then you know uh, writes, uh, writes back all these details to the uh, transaction and then finally allows the uh, person at the counter to actually give the book to the delivery person. So, so these are all various, so these are actually high level programs that are developed by application programmers and uh, so <coughs> now some of these programs are invoked concurrently by many people. So, it is a it is a program. So, each invocation of that is a process, each invocation of that is a process. So, this process gets initiated by multiple almost simultaneously, some, sometimes simultaneously by many people at you know like concurrently. Like for example, you can imagine the railway reservation um, system. So, there at any point of time there are probably hundreds of uh, a few thousand people trying to make uh, reservation. So, they are all invoking one particular uh, kind of program which is the transaction uh, which is this reservation I mean ticket issuing uh, program. So, a number of requests for these services are submitted by the end users concurrently from several input points, several points. some people will be operating them from their <coughs> various uh, you know devices. And the central system that uh, has to carry out these requests in a consistent manner ok. So, what is this consistency that we are talking about will depend on the actual system that we are uh, operating with. So, if you are actually operating a reservation system no seat on a journey is, is supposed to be reserved for more than one person that is the consistency requirement right? and the amount debited from party A is to be credited for party B if there is a transfer from A to B request. And then what is the measure? Measure is to maintain a reasonably high throughput. Throughput is number of transaction invocations that are completed in unit time by the server. How fast it is? This this will this will decide how what is your response time or when you as an end user invoke some of these things will you be made waiting for a long time you know, what is the uh, number of units number of uh, transaction invocations uh, that are completed uh, for unit time. So, try and maintain a high throughput ok. Now, let me again come back to this question. From an end user point of view, the transaction is just nothing but a logically sensible complete piece of work. Now, for, for us, for us the database system people, what is it exactly? Is it from the system point of view, it is actually a sequence of database operations, it is a sequence of lot of database operations read data from tables on the disk, compute, make updates, prepare the updates. Maybe you will have to read data from multiple tables, make the uh, updates, write them all back to the disk, all that. So, there is a whole lot of operations to be done. <coughs> now, one, one approach that I can adopt while handling transactions is to do one transaction at a time. One invocation comes, I will try, I will do that, complete it and then take up another. But 
the cancer uh, as we have been seeing in the last module the disc operations that are involved are you know very slow compared to the memory operation. So, this this uh, program is now and then kind of halting because it is waiting for the block to come to the uh, memory and so that it can ch do some changes and then continue uh, doing something more and etcetera right. So, uh, if you do one invocation at a time then your throughput is definitely going to be very very low because each of these uh, uh, operations involve each of these transactions involve multiple disk operations and the disk operations are an order of magnitude slower compared to the memory operation ok. So, but then so what is you so we do have to take multiple transactions probably even this uh, same invoca inv multiple invocations of the same transaction and then actually do them all concurrently just like an operating system does uh, several processes concurrently the transaction uh, the management system also has to uh, do several processes concurrently in order to increase the scope. So, there comes the scope for possible errors unless we do it carefully unless we do. So, operations of various transactions are going to be interleaved now because it is a single processor system. So, while it is doing some part of the work for some transaction it has asked for a disk read and so you temporarily suspend that process and then start taking another thing and then continue doing that and then something else uh, this fellow is asked for a disk read. So, you scrap that fellow out and then you know bring in another uh, transaction it is all going on. Right? But then you know each of these uh, things are actually doing lots of disk reads and then if they are if two of these if two of these transactions are actually trying to do some updates on as on a same database item and things like that then we are in actually a uh, little bit of a trouble unless we control as to how they do that. Okay. So, it has to be done carefully this is what we will examine in this particular module. So, in this context in the context of a transaction processing system we typically talk about these four important properties these are called acid properties acid atomicity consistency isolation and durability these are the four uh, important properties that we talk about and they are somehow uh, they are always called as acid properties mm -hmm. ok. So, let us look at the acid properties. So, what atomicity <coughs> basically uh, says that the work of a particular transaction should be done its in its entirety the work of a transaction should be done in its entirety or we should treat the transaction as though it is atomic. So, either do this entire work or do not do anything at all even though the request has come do not do not perform anything or perform the whole thing at a time. So, you can see that uh, why is this very important it is very important because carrying out some portion of the work obviously leads to inconsistent state of the database. For example, if you are transferring some thousand rupees from account A to B and you have reduced it from A's account and actually not credited it to B's account and then you know you finish uh, the, the, the program has finished for some reason then then it, the, the database is uh, you know is left in an inconsistent state it is supposed to uh, uh, be credited to the B's account. <coughs> so, part of the work if it is done and if you stop due to some uh, encountering some kind of error then uh, we have uh, then atomicity is not guaranteed. So, if if such a situation comes if a such a situation comes that you have to stop then you must keep this commitment of atomicity in mind and then you know ensure that the effect of the partial work that you have done is actually not reflected in the database at all ok. So, you must uh, 
you must ensure that even though you have proceeded uh, further uh, in this transaction, but you know, stop, stop somewhere in the middle, then uh, you should see that whatever changes that you have done are not actually permanently there in the database when you. <clears throat> so, this this particular atomicity is a very important uh, property and actually we will see that the recovery module of the transaction processing uh, system or recovery mo manager uh, module of the system will actually handle this. Okay. So, why would such a thing happen? It is possible that there is a system error and the processes have been suspended and you have to restart the system or there is a there is a uh, there is a power outage or something like that happens. So, you have to stop. So, how exactly this is done we will see uh, as we proceed. <coughs> now, here is the other property called the consistency property. So, this is more to do as a as a assumption about the correctness of individual transactions, individual uh, transaction programs actually. So, the assumption here is that uh, an application program which represents this transaction takes the system, the database system, the database actually not the system, database from one consistent state, it starts from a consistent state and then takes it to another, another consistent state that is the assumption that we make provided that the transaction is executed in its entirety and is also executed in isolation as though it is it is running all by itself and it completely runs ok. If that happens then the, the, the transaction we make an assumption of that the transaction actually uh, takes the system, the database uh, from one consistent state to another consistent state. This is a fair assumption to make and whose responsibility is this? It is obviously the application programmer's responsibility. See, when you write a program to do some transfer of amount A from uh, account A to account B and so you are implementing the transfer um, functionality then it is your responsibility to actually if you are guaranteed that your transaction is going to be run in its entirety, it is your responsibility to ensure that you have done the deduction and the addition right. And you are also given the assurance that you are done, you are isolate, uh, you, you are running uh, you know all by yourself, uh, no, there is no disturbance there or some other transaction does not run uh, in between. Okay, so this is a, uh, the responsibility of the application. Uh, pro so we kind of transaction processing systems assume that uh, the uh, the transaction programs uh, have been developed carefully and then thoroughly tested, thoroughly tested, so that we can make this assumption about the transaction program. That that if we have a, uh, a consistent database, the running of this particular program will take the database to another consistent state. Of course, uh, in between it might in, in some sense go to a little bit temporary inconsistent state because for example, you are transferring a, so you are at some point of time deducting 1000 rupees from its account and after some time only you are going to actually add. So, in between if you watch it you get a little bit inconsistent, but then we are not bothered about that. We are bothered about because our atomicity uh, you know uh, assumption says that we are going to run each of these transactions in their, in their entirety or do not run them at all ok. So, <coughs> so we assume that if it is uh, run executed in isolation and completely it will take the, data, uh, get, uh, the database from one consistent state to the consistent state this is a very fair assumption to make and it is the responsibility of the application programmers and that is what actually the role of the application programmers is also very very critical in this entire uh, system. They have to ensure that these uh, programs are thoroughly tested and, uh, and checked out. 
Okay, so here comes another very important uh, property called isolation. Okay, this is also very uh, you know very much required. So let's say there are some, especially in the context of uh, the system having to run many processes concurrently. So uh, in in that context. So, let us say there are some n number of transactions submitted around the same time to the system. So, what the isolation uh, property asks for is that though the operations of this particular any particular transaction T i are actually going to be interleaved for, for the performance sake for the sake of you know getting better performance are going to be interleaved with those of others. So, with respect to uh, this transaction, any other transaction Tj, any other transaction Tj, you know, appears to have either completely done before Ti, okay, appears to have either completed before Ti or going to start after this. That means essentially you are giving, you are able to get an impression that Ti will run you know as one unit without interference from other transactions. So, so, the operations of, so with respect to Ti, every other operation, every other transaction in Tj appears to have uh, completed before Ti or started after Ti finished. So, in some sense what we are saying here is that the operations of Tj are in some sense completely isolated from those of uh, the PI and and hence will not have any effect on on the PI. So whose uh, this is actually the responsibility of the concurrency control module. There is, a, there is going to be a concurrency control module in the entire subsystem. So that is going to take care of. Okay. Finally, we have what is called durability. Acid properties. So durability. What durability says is that upon successful completion of a transaction, the system must ensure that the effect of this particular transaction is permanently recorded in the database. Durable, permanently recorded. Also, if there are any failed transactions, the effect of those failed transactions should not be there in the database. So, both these things are very important. So, durability basically says this. <coughs> so, where do failures come? Of course, failures come because transaction uh, programs by, by themselves fail because of some internal errors. Okay. For example, attempted division by 0, then you have to kind of stop the program, right. So, that we also we will discuss what are called transaction aborts, a transaction may have to abort and system might crash due to various reasons just a uh, fluctuation in power or power failure or something like that the systems might system might crash. So, in this in the face of all these failures uh, it is the systems responsibility to say that if this transaction is successfully completed, then the effect of the transaction is permanently recorded in the database. Okay, and this is the responsibility of the recovery managing module. Recovery module. Okay. <coughs> so, how exactly uh, does the recovery module happen to do this? We will we'll see all that details. How can it do this? Okay. So, while we are discussing uh, these uh, issues, uh, here is a small again note about this transaction sequencing, right. Um, suppose some, some n number of these transactions are submitted around the same time, around roughly around the same time. They may not actually end in the same order because each of these transactions is actually doing a different kind of work. So, it might uh, something uh, one of these transactions may have to wait a little longer for some discrete or you know for the computation it is doing and things like that. So, we we do not know 
because when they will end, they may not end in the same order. So, actually from the system or our, our database management system point of view, the guaranteeing atomicity and isolation are the most important things for us, ok. Whereas, from a end user point of view, from the end user point of view, the submitter's point of view, when the transaction finishes of course matters because that's, that might decide whether he is getting the seat or not or you know he is getting the reservation or not or things like that. So, you have to keep all these things uh, in mind. So, <coughs> so, the end time is actually not uh, we cannot give much guarantees about the end time, but what we can give guarantees as a system is atomicity and isolation and what is uh, so uh, the ending time actually depends on on all these factors saying what is the policy for guaranteeing from to the end okay now let's come to the the concurrency control um, subsystem Interleaving of operations of these transaction processes is very important. Otherwise, we will lose out on the performance, the throughput will be very low. However, we cannot do arbitrary interleaving because it might lead to some inconsistent uh, state of the um, database. So, what is it that we have to do? So, we have to do some kind of regulation in this interleaving. We cannot allow all possible uh, uh, interleavings of process operations to be performed on the system. <coughs> Especially when two transactions, you know, involving the use of the same data item. Are trying to run, then they are going to conflict with each other, and so the concurrency control system, subsystem has to detect these kind of situations and then actually ensure that such a kind of thing does not happen, this kind of conflicts do not happen. So, so it, it requires us to kind of have a very detailed model of how this transactions get interleaved and then steady these uh, uh, we will later introduce what is called a, a schedule for transaction operations okay, that is a particular interleaving and then we have to steady these properties of those interleavings and then uh, find out what are the best uh, interleavings that and uh, that can be allowed and what what are other interleavings should not be allowed and things like that. So, the con there are multiple ways of uh, achieving this purpose of concurrency uh, control, controlling the concurrency such that uh, desired uh, 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 results come in the transaction system. We will uh, in this uh, sequence of lectures, I will discuss lock based concurrency control mechanisms. There are what are also called timestamp based concurrency control mechanisms like that. But we will uh, uh, we will try to we will uh, focus on uh, locking based concurrency uh, control. Okay. Now <coughs> again coming back to the recovery manager subsystem. System crashes cannot be avoided. System crashes cannot be avoided. So, some transactions might have run in a partially, in a partial manner, ok. So, because of that, they would have also made some changes to the database. And transaction failures also can may occur, like for example, uh, errors in the transaction, and you are trying to transfer amount, for example. Uh, uh, 
case account does not have sufficient money or things like that. And sometimes the transaction might actually be aborted by the system itself, the con concurrency control module that we discuss uh, we are going to see uh, might actually decide that this particular transaction is causing trouble for us because it is violating certain rules and it might decide that I am going to abort this transaction and kind of restart it. Okay. So, in the face of all these things the recovery manager has to ensure durability, recovery manager has to ensure both durability and autonomy. So, how does it do is the question. So, what exactly it needs to effect of any partially run transactions should not be there in the system and the effect of completed transactions must be there in the system that is the durability. Okay. Now, the, the trick in this entire thing is to actually have the control with you with the system as to when to say that okay, you have finished a transaction, a transaction you know keeps doing some work. So, it will ask for saying that yes, I have finished you know, but then you have to keep some control on when exactly you you kind of okay that. We will see that uh, as we go along. So, the recovery manager what it uses is what is called a system log. System log is a very important tool for the recovery manager. So, all the some amount of details of the running transactions if you admit a transaction it is running, then you keep track of certain details of this running transaction in the log and this log is always maintained in a reliable secondary storage. So, that the recovery manager can make use of this log in order to recover the system or in order to uh, uh, Restart a transaction. So, these log entries, the log entries you now will have when a particular transaction started running, the beginning of a transaction, and surprisingly, we have to really go after the process, after that, you know, in the sense that whatever it is doing, especially update operations it is doing, we have to keep a track of that. So, what are the update operations it is doing the transaction? What is the old value? What is the new value? When the existing value is there and it is going to change that and then write some new value. Sometimes we will keep track of the old value and the new value etcetera. And when is the transaction ending and so, we kind of keep a very close track of how the transaction is process to proceeding and what are the various things it is doing in a system log. So, that at any point of time if the system crashes we have sufficient information to kind of bring the database back to a consistent state. A consistent state would be a state where if you have admitted saying that your certain transaction has finished then the effect of the transaction is permanently there in the database. And if you have not done that, then you do not give any commitment for the transaction. And such a transaction has not actually done any damage to the database. Its effect was not, not there in the database. Such is the critical nature of this particular operation. So, so how exactly the recovery happens will depend on the kind of log that we maintain and what is the protocol that we use for uh, uh, method we use for recovery. So, all this we will discuss when we come to the uh, towards the end of this uh, module. Okay. So, these are the various interesting uh, issues 
regarding transaction processing. Now, let us try to focus um, a little bit on what exactly are the these operations ok from a system point of view db system point of view from a the programmer is actually going to use c or c plus plus java and then write this uh, you know detailed uh, c uh, operations and then uh, uh, invoking sql command and all that but then those things are all going to be replaced by library calls uh, that will implement those uh, queries etc finally it will all boil down to a bunch of reads from the uh, database updates and writing it back right so, so those are the things that we will focus now at this stage so from a db system point of view especially to, uh, for the transaction processing uh, sub activity we only need the read and write operations of a transaction onto the database right and all the other operations happen in memory and so actually don't affect the database on the disk so let's introduce some notation for this so rfx is a transaction uh, reads some item x uh, I am going to actually make this a little bit more detail later on as we as we uh, uh, go through these lectures. But for the moment, right now, let's assume that R of X is a transaction read. Transaction reads an item X. What exactly is an item? Again, it depends on uh, you know what we choose. So it is a normal practice to choose an item as a disk block. Uh, wx is transaction writes this item x. So, all these database items we will specify them as x, y, z. Now, so the read write among in addition to the read write operations, the transaction also does what is called commit and abort operations. Okay, so what's commit? The transaction issues a commit command when it has successfully completed its sequence of operations and is ready to kind of indicate that it indicates that the effect can be permanently recorded in the database. The effect can be permanently recorded in the database. So, this commit is a uh, it, it is going to make it is a system call, it is a kind of a system call. So, by making this system invoking this commit com, uh, call, what the transaction the individual transaction ok, the process that is going to indicate saying that I have finished my work, I have finished my work and all the changes that I have done actually what some of the changes it has done might be in memory some of the changes it has done might be in the disk it all depends because we are going to have a buffer you have this you have uh, you have studied paging right paging mechanism in operating systems so disk pages disk blocks are going to be brought into buffer memory buffer space and the, and the buffer pages are going to be uh, uh, given to the processors and so the processors will keep making changes so some of the changes might be in memory some of the changes might have gone to the disk ok all this is happening now it, it is in this context the transaction the as a process it when it invokes a commit what it is saying is that I have successfully completed I mean I have completed the sequence of operations and whatever I have done can be permanently recorded in the database. Now, once the DBMA system you know gives a yes for this commit command, so it invoke the, the transaction uh, individual process is asking for a commit 
uh, it is invoking a commit uh, operation. So, the commit is a system call. So, that comes to the uh, RDBMS runtime system. When the RDBMS runtime system says yes to this, yes, I agree, then the system is obliga uh, obligated or obliged to ensure that the effect of the transaction is permanently recorded in the database. Okay. So, what exactly happens during commit? This will of course will depend on the specific. See, it is possible that uh, just before the commit, you know, uh, of the transaction might, you know, the system might fail. Okay. So, so it all depends. So, there is ultimately there is going to be something called a, a, a commit log record. We will see that later on. So, the commit log record is what actually you know has to be returned to the log only then you know we will say that the, the actual the transaction has indeed completed its work. Okay. So, it, it actually uh, right now it is a bit difficult to say this, but we will see what are the exactly the error recovery methods specific error recovery methods that we uh, have adopted. And based on that, uh, it will become clear actually as to what happens during a, a commit. So, but it is important to remember that the commit is a system call. So, it comes to you the RDBMS runtime system. So, you can take all the precautions that are necessary in order before you say yes, because once you say yes, you are committed, right. <laughs> That is the interesting thing about the commit. So, we will see exactly how commit gets uh, implemented in various uh, under the uh, different error recovery uh, protocols. Now, the other operation is the transaction abort. Transaction abort is also a, 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 like just I read, write, commit, abort. These are the high level operations that we can think about. About basically indicates that there has been some internal error, there has been some internal error and the transaction, the process. So, as a programmer you would have you know kind of been checking some things in the in while running your transaction. So, you uh, as a application programmer have certain under certain circumstances decided that this transaction cannot proceed further and so you say that I want to abort this product. Maybe you have uh, encountered some uh, you know attempted uh, division by 0 or you know you are uh, trying to do some uh, debit and, the, and, the, and then actually if you carry it out the debit is going to become negative or something like that. Uh, so, you have detected some uh, condition within your uh, application and then you have decided that uh, you as a programmer have decided that I cannot proceed with this. So, you you would like to issue an abort request. When you issue an abort request, then you are kind of indicating to the uh, system saying that there has been some issue with me, I mean there have been some issue with this particular uh, transaction process. So, do not record anything that I have done, you know, in permanently in the database. So, once it gives a S yes for this abort, then what it the system's obligation responsibility is that the partial work done by this particular transaction has no effect on the transaction on the database which is on the base. Okay. Again, what exactly happens during the abort depends on the specific error recovery method that we use and the specific concurrency control method adopted by the uh, system. Okay. So, these are the various uh, transaction uh, high level operations uh, done by the. So, uh, the transactions are actually application programs, but we are focusing from our point of view, we we'll just focus on the reads, writes and the and the uh, uh, the issue of 
committing and about the uh, the from a transaction processing point of view the kind of model that we adopt is that the database basically consists of several items usually it is taken as a block or a page is the granularity of the item the granularity of the item is taken as a as a block uh, you could of course also take couples of granularity and it, it the granularity that we have and will obviously affect all these algorithms and protocols so we cannot really go into too much details here and the transactions operate by exchanging data with the db alone they are not supposed to exchange information among them they cannot exchange, right? so they should not exchange messages between them we make it this assumption and then uh, we focus basically on read write commit award operations and of course ignore all in because they are all happening ultimately what comes to the desk is what is there in the database otherwise it is not there to the vanish once the transactions and transactions of course are not necessary ok. So, good uh, I will continue this uh, de more details about uh, this in the next lecture we will focus on concurrency uh, control and how, how do we model the uh, concurrency and then how do we control that and then we will discuss error rate.